Hey, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today, we are going to discuss a side project I've been working on. I have an Amazon Echo over on the desk, and today we're going to take a look at an unknown signal with a logic analyzer, as well as using magnet wire to solder onto extremely small pads on this device. So with that, we're going to head over to the desk. Also, I'd like to thank everyone who gave feedback on my audio, audio quality, or lack thereof, in the previous videos. So please let me know if the microphone is better in this video. So uh, you can see here, I've got, I've got this Amazon Echo taken apart on the desk here. And uh, this is just to show you that this is actually from an Amazon Echo. Uh, but this is the main board. And I've taken this uh, protective uh, shielding uh, off of the main CPU, and there's one signal that I have been interested in analyzing and just understanding what it is. Uh, and uh, we can't even see it because it's so small right now. So, uh, but before we do that, before we jump under the microscope, let's talk about this tool I have on the desk here. This is a cheapo logic analyzer. And if you've never used a logic analyzer, before, what it does is not all that different from what this device does right here when it is in the DC voltage mode. It measures voltages and measures their change over time. Now, this device over here is very slow. It samples the voltage very slow and it reflects the change in a voltage value Again, it samples it and, and, and displays a value very slow. This, on the other hand, uh, it says here on this little cheap $15 logic analyzer, it says 24 megahertz. That means it's sampling at 24 million times a second and has eight independent channels that it can do that on. So, uh, and this is just some cheap Chinese knockoff clone of a logic analyzer. So. This is going to allow us to look at digital signals that are coming from this board and to, inter and to attempt to interpret them in different ways in a piece of software that we'll look at in a minute. But first, we need to get connected to an extremely small wire. Uh, ex excuse me, we need to connect a wire to an extremely small pad on this board using magnet wire. So uh, I've already got this kind of rigged up. Um, so to a regular sized wire that would be way too big to connect to the pad that we're going to be soldering to, I have soldered this piece of magnet wire onto it. This is extremely small, 34 gauge, I believe, magnet wire. And we're going to hop onto the microscope and we're going to get this soldered onto our pad with the signal that we're gonna look at. Switch the microscope cam. And we're gonna just zoom in on our target area. So down here by our main SOC chip, um, you can see I've already thrown down some flux on our target area. There is a signal that I am interested in. And so I'm going to just find, uh, find my tweezers and try to point at this. Uh, you can see my tweezers in re uh, are relatively large uh, compared to the pad that they're going to be on. So there's four connection points, one, two, three, four. These two in the middle are the interesting ones. And today I'm going to solder onto this uh, one on the left middle part of the board there. So to do that, I'm going to have my magnet wire over on the right side. And I'm going to try to bend it just so it goes in there just right. I got my soldering iron over on the other side. And I'm zoomed in so far that it's kind of hard to find until I get these to the right spot on the board. But now, okay, we got a good solder joint, and I threw down a lot of flux before this, um, so that's why we're getting such a good solder joint there. Um, 
there we go and uh just to just so you understand this magnet wire is coated so this outside part of the magnet wire is not conductive and it's kind of uh it's coated with some sort of enam enamel i believe and so you have to kind of scrape that off you can do that with a knife or you can just kind of heat it up and uh, touch solder to it and I, I just ruined my perfect joint there way to go way to go matt and we're back on okay now obviously that's a terrible joint uh in terms of structural integrity but luckily i don't have to move this to read my signal now because my logic analyzer is all in place i've already connected uh as you may have seen from the larger picture uh over here i've just i found that ground uh, uh the ground was connected to this this screw right here and so I've got a wire that I've just uh, connected up to that screw. Uh, don't work any harder than you have to to get ground. I, I, I've seen people before who are soldering onto really tiny ground pads because it's right next to the TX or the RX of the UART connection that they're looking for. Don't do that. Just find the easiest place on the board to get ground. Uh, so now we're going to head over to our screen and... Oh man, who's this? It's Lewis Rossman, the king of soldering and board repair. Uh, and the reason why I have this, this pulled up is because I get uh, questions from a lot of people all the time about what equipment should I buy? Where should I buy uh, wires and solder and all that sort of, sort of stuff? And I always tell them to go to the latest uh, board repair video from Lewis Rossman and just look in the description and you will find all this useful these useful links here. And specifically today, I'm gonna to go under soldering and repair supplies and show you that this, uh, the thick insulated wire, um, there is actually a thinner wire that is available here. That's a 44 gauge. Uh, don't need it that small today. So this is the wire that I'm using. So just thought I would give everyone that piece of advice to go to this, go to any of his YouTube videos uh, that are repair related and you will see all of these great links to buy stuff. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, just really quickly. If you go on Amazon, you look for a logic analyzer, you look for one of these like 12, 13, $15 ones. They're probably going to be one of these Chinese clones and they work pretty well. I have not seen the need to go and like buy like one of these thousand dollar ones. Uh, maybe someday, who knows? Uh, next, I want to talk about the software that we're using. So Saley uh, has this piece of software that all these logic analyzers, most of them work with. Um, it's called Logic or Logic 2 is the new uh, is the new piece of software, which I have open over here. Uh, <laughs> you're going to see that I've already been looking at this signal. So um, what I'm going to do now is I've got my board disconnected and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to like zoom this way out so you'll kind of see this roll really slow across the screen is when I hit start it's going to start sampling voltages along all of these uh, eight channels that we have on our logic analyzer but I only have one signal connected I only have on this one channel so I'm going to hit start and then it uh it crashes quite regularly uh i don't know why but we're gonna try again hey there we go and now i'm gonna come over to my desk and i'm gonna plug in the device and there you see the voltage jump up to a high voltage value and then there we go we're starting to get these signals and i'm just gonna hit stop so now we have we have captured our digital signal here and we can zoom in on any of these places and we can see uh, that this is clearly some some type of digital signal that's being transmitted over uh, on that pad that we've soldered to and so now in this logic software uh, we can click over here on analyzers so uh, 
So this signal, I am making an assumption that it is a se asynchronous serial signal, not I squared C and SPY. And the reason is, is because if it were one of these two protocols, I would need a clock signal that would it would use as well uh, uh, that is independent of the data signal. So in UART, there's no clock that's sent uh, across a, a different channel. What it does is it's implicit in, in the protocol. So you set the bit rate. And that means that you have to guess at what bit rate or a baud rate is being used. So uh, you can go on Wikipedia, you can go on other websites and find the list of these common baud rates. So this is, I would say, uh, in later days is the most common baud rate that I've seen out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in and we're gonna be going to at attempt to interpret this data based on this baud rate, which, uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, it is not correct. And we can see that over here because we get all these framing errors, right? Because there's no independent signal being sent to tell uh, the receiver of this digital signal at what speed it is going to be sending units of data across the wire, uh, it's just implicitly assuming that baud rate that we entered. And there, and then it's getting this error, right? And you can almost see that here, that this is probably one byte of data here, but it's, it's cutting it short. It's cutting short the time that it's interpreting it right here. So, uh, and, that, and then it gets this framing error, right? So if we go and we edit what baud rate it is, uh, you know, you can spend lots of time guessing different ones, and I did that, and I found that, that this is the, the correct baud rate. I kind of always start at 115.200 and go up or down from there, depending on uh, what I'm seeing. And there, if we if we reinterpret the data with that new baud rate, we see all of those errors go away. And now we just have these bytes. We have these bytes of data that are being sent across the wire. Um, I don't know what they are. This is uh, going to be the next step in my reverse engineering adventure on this Amazon Echo device. So. Um, yeah, kind of just going back over to the microscope um, really fast. We're zoomed out. So, so yeah, I just I just found this signal over here sitting next to this main uh, SOC, what I assume to be like a, a Linux, you know, this is like a CPU, like some ARM CPU, most likely. That's, uh, you know, over here we've got uh, flash, the flash storage on this device. Um, but yeah, just some some kind of interesting signal coming off of a uh, thing over there. And I'm so zoomed out that you can hardly see the magnet wire in the video. But that is how we can dive deep into a circuit board and look at different digital signals that we see on, on these circuit boards. And uh, that's kind of the fun part about hardware reverse engineering. You, you never know what you're gonna find on a board. And now I've got these, these bytes of data and now I just get to go and attempt to interpret those and understand what they mean and uh, Google around and see if I can figure it out. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe uh, if you want more want to see more videos like this where I just uh, grab a random device and start looking around at signals on a circuit board uh, let me know thank you and have a great day